In this video, we will discuss about the urogenital system of ox, horse, dog and pig. Urogenital system consists of urinary and genital system. Because the urinary system is closely related to the reproductive system during its development and it is morphologically also related to the urinary system and genital system of the animal. The urinary system, it performs various functions. It is responsible to maintain the composition of the body fluids in physiological range, excretion of the fluid waste, vitamin D metabolism, electrolyte balance and mineral conservation. It is also involved in endocrine functions that is to produce various hormones, renin, bradykinin, and erythropoietin. It is also responsible to remove the foreign bodies from the blood. Urinary system consists of different components. First are the kidneys. They are paired organs which are responsible for production of the urine. Second are the ureters. Ureters are tube-like structures which transport the urine from the kidneys to the urinary bladder. Third part is the urinary bladder which acts as a reservoir of the urine and urine accumulates into the urinary bladder until it is expelled out through the urethra. The last part is the urethra. Urethra is responsible for expulsion of the urine to the outside through the urethral orifice. Urethra is different in male and female animals. Topographic anatomy of the urinary system, especially the kidneys, it is very important. First is the topographic anatomy of the kidney of ox. They are present in the sublumbar region, that is below the lumbar vertebrae, in the upper cranial part of the abdominal cavity. But kidneys, they may extend into the intrathoracic part of the abdominal cavity under last two ribs also. The position of the kidney, it varies according to the movement of the diaphragm and fullness and emptiness of the rumor. The cranial extremity of the right kidney, it is thick and lies under the renal impression of the liver. Means the right kidney is closely attached to the liver by a hepatorenal ligament. Then the kidneys of horse, their topographic location is variable. The right kidney is situated in the vertebral end of the last two or three ribs and first lumbar vertebrae. Whereas the left kidney is more caudally placed and is located under the last rib and first two or three lumbar transverse processes. In case of dog, the right kidney it extends from last rib to second or third lumbar vertebrae. It is embedded in the renal impression of the liver like in other animals. The left kidney is about the level of third to fifth lumbar vertebrae. In pig, the both the kidneys they are placed parallel to each other, that is they are ventral to the lumbar transverse process of first lumbar four lumbar vertebrae. So they are no, right kidney is not cranially placed as in other animals. So on the basis of the gross morphologically, kidneys they can be classified into two types. Multipyramidal kidneys, they are also named as multilobular kidneys and unipyramidal kidneys that is unilobular kidney. Multipyramidal kidneys or multilobular kidneys in case of cattle and buffalo, the boundaries between the lobes they are formed by the fissures which can be seen externally. Unipyramidal kidneys or unilobular kidneys there are no lobes present externally as the name indicates. So they are present in case of horse, dog, sheep and goats. They are smooth from outsides. In kidney of ox, these kidneys both right and left they are reddish brown in color and oval in shape or sometimes you can say wind shaped kidneys. Their surface on both the right and left kidneys, the surface is having numerous lobes and these lobes are separated from each other by fissures. These fissures, they are filled with fat. We have observed that in case of bovine kidney, 
द नंबर ऑफ लोब्स दे आर वेरिएबल द नंबर इज अबाउट ट्वेल्व टू ट्वेंटी फाइव इन नंबर द लोब्स दे आर वेरी स्मॉल इन साइज सम आर वेरी लार्ज इन साइज द स्मॉलर लोब्स दे रिप्रजेंट द ओरिजिनल किडनी लोब्स वेयर एज द लार्जर लोब्स दे आर फॉर्मड बाय द यूनियन ऑफ टू और थ्री यूनिट्स ऑफ द लोब्स राइट किडनी ऑफ द ऑक्स इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट किडनी वी कैन ईजली आइडेंटिफाई द राइट एंड लेफ्ट किडनी इन केस ऑफ बोवाइंस द राइट किडनी फर्स्ट इज अबाउट द राइट किडनी ओवल इन शेप एंड डॉर्सो वेंटरली फ्लैट राइट किडनी इज हैविंग टू सर्फेसिस टू बॉर्डर्स एंड टू एक्सटीमिटीज द सर्फेसिस आर डॉर्सल एंड वेंटरल सर्फेस डॉर्सल सर्फेस इज राउंडड एंड लाइज अगेंस्ट द क्रस्ट ऑफ द डायफ्राम एंड सब लंबर मसल्स वेयर एज द वेंटरल सर्फेस इज लेस कन्वेक्स एंड रिलेटेड टू लिवर पैंक्रियाज ड्यूडिनम एंड कोलन दैन टू एक्सटिमिटीज क्रेनियल एक्सटिमिटी एंड द कॉडल एक्सटिमिटी क्रेनियल एक्सटिमिटी इज राउंडड वेयर एज कॉडल एक्सटिमिटी इज नैरो एंड पॉइंटड देर आर टू बॉर्डर्स ऑफ द राइट किडनी मीडियल एंड द लिटल बॉर्डर मीडियल बॉर्डर ऑफ द राइट किडनी इज नियरली स्टेट एंड प्रजेंट पैरल टू द कॉडल विना के वा वेयर एज द लिटल बॉर्डर इज कन्वेक्स वन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट स्ट्रक्चर विच इज प्रजेंट इन द किडनी इज द हाइलस हाइलस इज दैट एरिया वेयर द रीनल आर्टरी वेन नर्व लिम्फेटिक्स एंड यूरिटर इज प्रजेंट इन केस ऑफ राइट किडनी द लोकेशन ऑफ द हाइलस इज प्रजेंट इन द मिडल ऑफ द मीडियल बॉर्डर ऑफ द किडनी लेफ्ट किडनी प्रजेंट्स थ्री सर्फेसिस दैट इज डॉर्सल वेंट्रल एंड लिटरल सर्फेस लिटरल सर्फेस इज ऑल्सो टम्ड एज रिम्यूनल सर्फेस बिकॉज इट कम्स इन कॉन्टैक्ट विद द र्यूमन द डॉर्सल सर्फेस इट इज कन्वेक्स एंड रिलेटर टू द डॉर्सल लंबर वर्टिबली लंबर मसल्स वेयर एज द वेंट्रल सर्फिस इज लेस कन्वेक्स एंड इज रिलेटर टू द इंटेस्टाइंस लिटरल सर्फिस विच इज ऑल्सो टम्ड एज रिम्यूनल सर्फिस इट इज फ्लैटेंड ड्यू टू इट्स कॉन्टैक्ट विद द रिमन एंड इज ऑल्सो टम्ड एज रिम्यूनल सर्फिस दैन द एक्सटिमिटीज क्रेनियल एक्सटिमिटीज एंड कॉडल एक्सटिमिटीज क्रेनियल एक्सटिमिटी इज राउंडड वेयर एज कॉडल एक्सटिमिटी इज पॉइंटड द टू बॉर्डर्स मीडियल बॉर्डर इज स्ट्रेट एंड द लेटरल बॉर्डर इज कन्वेक्स इन केस ऑफ लेफ्ट किडनी द हाइलस इज प्रजेंट इन ए डी फिशर विच इज सिचुएटेड एट द इंटीरियर लिटरल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द डॉर्सल सर्फेस सो दिस वॉज अबाउट द एक्सटर्नल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द किडनी नाउ इज अबाउट द इंटरनल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द किडनी When we cut the section of the kidney it is divided into two parts the outer part which is dark in color is termed as cortex whereas the inner part which is lighter in color is the medulla the renal cortex it is reddish brown in color and has fine granular appearance whereas the medulla it consists of two zones further the outer zone of the medulla is darker वेयर एज द इनर जोन इज पेलर इन कलर और लाइट इन कलर वी कैन ईजली आइडेंटिफाई द मेडुला फ्रॉम द कॉटेक्स बाय ए जंक्शन दैट इज टर्म्ड एज कॉटिको मेडुलरी जंक्शन द कॉटिको मेडुलरी जंक्शन इज हैविंग वेरियस ब्लड वेसल्स इन दैट एरिया द कॉनिकल मास प्रजेंट इन द कॉटेक्स विच इज टूवर्ड्स द मेडुला इज हैविंग रीनल पिरामिड्स द रीनल पिरामिड्स their number is variable they are about 18 to 22 in number in case of ox the renal pyramids they are roughly triangular in shape the base of the renal pyramid it is towards cortex whereas the apex of the renal pyramid it is towards the medulla and it is having an opening that is termed as renal papilla from the renal papilla there are small funnel shaped structures which extends into the medulla of the kidney they are termed as calyx minor which opens into the larger tubular organs which are termed as calyx major both the calyx majors from the kidney they 
ओपन इन टू द यूरिटर यूरिटर विच इज द एक्सटर्नल पार्ट विच इज द पार्ट ऑफ द किडनी विच कैरीज द यूरिन फ्रॉम द किडनीज टू द यूरिनरी ब्लडर इन केस ऑफ ऑक्स द रीनल पेलविस इज एबसेंट विच इज अदरवाइज प्रेजेंट इन अदर स्पीशीज लाइक हॉर्स डॉग एक्सेट्रा नाउ इज अबाउट द किडनीज ऑफ हॉर्स इन केस ऑफ हॉर्स द किडनीज आर नॉन लोबुलेटेड मीन्स दे आर स्मूथ फ्रॉम आउटसाइड देर इज नो लोबुलेशन ऑब्जर्व इन द किडनी ऑफ हॉर्स एक्सटर्नली एंड द शेप ऑफ द किडनी इज डेफ डिफरेंट इन द राइट एंड लेफ्ट साइड इन केस ऑफ हॉर्सेस राइट किडनी इज लाइक हार्ट ऑफ ए प्लेइंग कार्ड वेर एज लेफ्ट किडनी इज बीन शेप इन केस ऑफ हॉर्स द टू सर्फिसज डॉर्सल सर्फिस ऑफ द राइट किडनी इज कन्वेक्स एंड रिलेटेड टू द डायफ्रॉम वेर एज द वेंट्रल सर्फिस इज कनके एंड रिलेटेड टू द बेस ऑफ द सिकम टू बॉर्डर मीडियल बॉर्डर एंड द लेटरल बॉर्डर मीडियल बॉर्डर इज इंडेंटेड बाय हाइलस एंड इज रिलेटेड टू कॉडल बिना के वा एंड एड्रीनल ग्रैंड वेर एज द लेटरल बॉर्डर इट इज कन्वेक्स इन शेप इन केस ऑफ राइट किडनी इन केस ऑफ राइट किडनी ऑफ द हॉर्स द हाइलस इज प्रजेंट इन द मिडल ऑफ द मीडियल बॉर्डर बाय ए डीप नॉच which was not as deep in case of ox now is about the left kidney of horse left kidney of horse is related to dorsally to the diaphragm ventrally to the jejunum descending colon and major part of this kidney is covered by the peritoneum medially it is in contact with the left adrenal gland aorta and left lobe of the pancreas the two extremities dorsal and ventral extremities are there dorsal extremity of the left kidney it is connected to the reno splenic ligament to the spleen caudal extremity of the left kidney is wider and thicker and makes it contact with the descending duodenum so internal structure of the kidney it is divided into two parts like same way as in case of ox that is outer part is cortex and inner part is the medulla so difference from that of ox is that the central part of the medulla it joins to form a concave ridge which is termed as renal crest renal crest is having various openings in it and is called area cerebrosa through which the large papillary duct opens at the renal pelvis the ducts from the poles of the kidney they are termed as terminal recesses these are the actually extensions of the renal pelvis which are present in case of horse only but not in other species the hilus of the kidney leads to the renal sinus which lost into the dilated part of the ureter termed as renal pelvis now come to the kidneys of dog In case of dogs both the kidneys they are smooth and oval in shape the kidneys are dark brown in color in case of dogs both the kidneys right and left they are bean shaped and retroperitoneal in position the right kidney is related dorsally to the crest of the diaphragm and psoas muscles ventrally it is related to the descending duodenum pancreas and laterally it is related to the abdominal wall the hilus of both the left and right kidneys they are present in the middle of the medial border in case of dog internal structure of the kidneys is divided into two parts in case of dogs like in other species that is outer cortex and medulla the difference is that here in case of dogs renal crest is present which is long and narrow the kidney internally is having various papilla like structure which are not actually papilla they are pseudo papilla which are not easily identifiable how they are present but the their number is 12 to 16 in number so they are present in case of dog kidney 
Pig kidneys are having very interesting features as compared to the other species. The pig kidneys, they are externally smooth. There is no lobulation, but internally they are having the structures of that of ox. That is major calyx, minor calyxes, they are present. The shape of the kidney in case of pig is bean shape. The difference than other species is that the right kidney has no contact with the liver. The hilus of both the kidneys, right and left, it is present in the middle of the medial border. Both the extremities, they are slightly pointed in case of pig. The internal structure of the kidney, it is divided into cortex and medulla. The cortex is thicker in, than the medulla in case of pig. Here the medulla is arranged in the form of renal pyramids. The renal pyramids having papilla like that of ox, which is opening as small tubular structure, they are termed as calyx minors. Then the calyx minors, they open into the calyx majors. Ultimately, they open into the ureter. Then the kidneys of small ruminants, sheep and goat, they are almost similar to each other. Uh, we can identify what between these two also, that the sheep kidney is having more fat as compared to the goat kidneys. They are smooth externally and bean shaped. The color of the kidneys, light brown to reddish brown in color, depending upon the condition or the nutritional status of the animal. The kidneys of sheep and goat, internally, they are having pyramids, which are termed as pseudo-pyramids. So, the kidneys, they are very difficult to identify from the dog. Some differences are there, of course. The sheep and goat kidneys, that is, they are smaller in size as compared to that of dog. In case of dogs, the kidneys are elongated, whereas in case of sheep and goat, they are typically bean shaped. Internally, pseudopyramids in these species, which are not actually the renal pyramids, pseudopapilla, they are well defined in case of sheep and goat, but as compared to that dog. Pseudopyramids, their number is variable in sheep and goat also. In case of sheep, they are more in number, whereas in goat, they are less in number. The next part of the urinary system is the ureters. Ureters are excretory ducts of the kidneys. The ureter is consisted of two parts. The part of the ureter which is present in the abdomen is termed as abdominal part. The part of the ureter is present in the pelvic part is the pelvic part of the ureter. So each kidney is having different ureter that is right and left ureter. Right ureter it emerges from the hilus of the right kidney from the ventral surface and it passes backward along the medial border of the kidney then it is retroperitoneal in position. The left ureter also uh, merging from the hilus of the left kidney, then it passes to the cranial aspect of the dorsal surface, crossing over the this dorsal surface and then runs to the caudal part. In male animals, the pelvic part of the ureter, it enters into the urinary fold and crosses the vas deferens, Whereas in case of female animals, it is situated on the dorsal part of the broad ligament of uterus. The next part of the urinary system is the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder, it is a musculomembranous sac capable of great distension and it serves as reservoir of the urine in all the animals. So urinary bladder of the ox is slightly distendable storage organ and it is not having any constant size, shape and position. Its size, shape and position varies depending on the presence or emptiness of the urine in it. When empty, the shape of the urinary bladder is pyramidal or pyriform in shape. The size of the urinary bladder, it is decreased 
and it is like the size of a fist and is located on the ventral wall of the pelvic cavity urinary bladder anatomically when we see it is having three parts vertex or it is also termed as apex middle part is the body third part is the neck the vertex is the cranial blind end and presents in its middle a rounded cul-de-sac which is a scar like tissue and is remnant of the uracus uracus is the part of the tube that connects the primitive urinary bladder with the allantoic sac in case of fetal life the middle part of the urinary bladder is the body which is rounded and somewhat flattened from above downwards it presents two surfaces superior surface and the inferior surface these surfaces they are convex when the urinary bladder is filled with the urine third part of the urinary bladder is neck which is a narrow caudal extremity where the urinary bladder joins with the last part that is urethra relations of the urinary bladder to the other organs of the body it depends on the amount of the urine present in the urinary bladder and sex of the animals the dorsal surface of the urinary bladder it is related to the rectum genital fold terminal part of vas deferens and vesicular glands prostate gland in case of male animals whereas in case of female animals the dorsal surface of the urinary bladder it is related to the body of the uterus and some part of the vagina the ventral surface of the urinary bladder in both the male and female animals it is related to the floor of the pelvis and extends into the abdomen when it is in the distended position urinary bladder is hold into the position by various ligaments there are three peritoneal ligament which is responsible for the maintenance of the position of the urinary bladder there are two lateral ligament and one is the ventral or the middle ligament the lateral ligaments they are extending on either side of the lateral aspect of the urinary bladder to the lateral wall of the pelvis lateral urinary bladder ligaments they are drawn out prenatally also as vascular folds by large umbilical arteries so these ligaments they are also termed as round ligaments of the urinary bladder the round ligament of the urinary bladder they contains the remnant of the fetal umbilical arteries then the ventral ligament or the middle ligament of the urinary bladder it is of course median in position and it extends from the ventral surface of the urinary bladder up to the floor of the pelvis or the abdomen there is one important structure present in the urinary bladder that is termed as trigonum vesci it is a modified triangular area on the dorsal wall of the urinary bladder which is close to the neck between the openings of the ureters and the urethra and is termed forming a triangular area termed as trigonum vesci the terminal part of the ureter after crossing the muscular coat of the bladder passes into the submucosa and opens at the urinary bladder there is formation of a valve at this area which prevents the retention of the urine from the urinary bladder into the ureter then next system is the male genital system male genital system functionally it is involved in formation development maturation transportation and deposition of the male gametes into the females the male genital system consists of different parts the outer part of the male genital system is the scrotum which is a skin like pouch it contains paired testes testes are primary sex organs responsible for production of the male gametes that is spermatozoa 
and hormones that is testosterone next part is the epididymis epididymis is highly convoluted duct which helps in maturation and storage of the spermatozoa next part is ductus deferens ductus deferens is also termed as pars deferens which is responsible for transportation of the spermatozoa from the epididymis to the urethra then is the urethra urethra is distal part of the urethra is forming the common passages for the urine and the semen next part is the penis and the prepuce which is the copulatory organ in case of male animals next is the accessory sex glands there are three main accessory sex glands present in case of male animals that is prostate vesicular glands and vulvo urethral glands vulvo urethral glands they are also termed as copper glands the distal part of the vas deferens it is also containing glands that is termed as ampullary glands first part of the male genital system is the scrotum position of the scrotum is variable in different species in case of ox the scrotum is present in the inguinal region they are ovoid in shape whereas in case of horse it is also present in the inguinal region but its shape is globular in case of dogs the scrotum is present in the inguinal region in case of boar it is situated near the anus the orientation of the scrotum is variable in different species in case of ruminants they are present along the long axis that is in the vertical position in case of ox the scrotum is deep and pendulous in position in case of ox whereas in case of other species that is in case of horse and dog it is directed horizontally in case of pig it is obliquely placed totally different than that of the other species so when we see the structure of the scrotum it is having different layers the outermost covering of the scrotum is skin the skin is usually hairless and light brown in color in case of ox the skin is marked centrally by a longitudinal groove which is prominent in case of ruminants this groove is termed as raphi scroti this groove divides the scrotum into two parts that is left and right part each scrotal pouch is different for each testis next part of the scrotum tunica dotus tunica dotus it comprised of fibromuscular elastic tissue and has smooth muscles the next layer is external spermatic fascia which is derived from the superficial and deep fascia of the abdomen next is cremaster muscle so which is detached from the internal obliquus abdominis muscle next layer is internal spermatic fascia internal spermatic fascia is it is having two fascia external and internal spermatic fascia so these layers scrotal layers are very important because we have to perform castration in large animals so it is very important to learn these structures the next layer is tunica vaginalis which are the layers of the testis now come to the testis testis are paired organs in male animals they are the male gonads the name of the testis it is derived from a greek word that is orchis and latin word that is testis the testis they are having two surfaces medial and lateral surface two borders free border and attached border 
and having two extremities dorsal and ventral extremities that both extremities dorsal and ventral extremities they are rounded in case of testis the free borders one border is free that is interior border and attached border where the epididymis is attached both the testis they are elongated and oval in shape the testis they are covered by two layers that is tunica vaginalis and tunica albuginea layer tunica vaginalis layer it is having two parts outer covering is the parietal covering parietal layer and the inner covering is the visceral layer of the tunica vaginalis below the tunica vaginalis layer there is present tunica albuginea then in case of horse the testes they are smaller in size and globular in shape the long axis of the testes they are running parallel to the long axis of the body means they are horizontal in position ligament of the tail of the epididymis it is thick as compared to ox then come to the testes of pig the pig testes they are very large in size and elliptical in shape the long axis of the pig testes it is directed upward and backward so it is present near the anus obliquely placed in case of dog testes are small and oval in shape they are suspended in oblique direction next part of the male genital system is epididymis it is divided into three parts head or caput of the epididymis body or corpus epididymis tail and coda epididymis it is attached to the testis at the cordo medial border head of the epididymis is firmly attached to the testicular capsule and it re- receives many efferent ductules which combine together to form epididymal duct the body is less completely attached with the body of the epididymis and there is space between the testis and the body of the epididymis called as testicular bursa the tail of the epididymis is the attached to the caudal extremity of the testis by proper ligament of the testis tail of the epididymis it continues as ductus deferens the length of the epididymis it is variable in different species in case of bull it is 40 to 50 meters in case of horse 72 to 81 meters in boar it is about 17 to 18 meter in dog it is 5 to 8 meters next part is the ductus deferens ductus deferens is continuation of the epididymis from its tail region in case of bull it passes along the medial border of the testis and it ascends into the spermatic cord towards the testicular vessels and enters into the abdominal cavity through the inguinal canal the lumen of the duct is narrow and it is lined by thin vascular wall it penetrates the prostate gland and opens into the urethra at the colliculus seminalis the terminal part of the ductus deferens it is enlarged to form the ampullary glands near its termination the duct is joined by duct of the vesicular glands and it shares a common passage is called ejaculatory duct which opens into the colliculus seminalis in case of horse the ductus deferens is not coiled cranially and is not related to any part of the testis in dogs ampulla are narrow genital fold is small vas deferens enters into the urethra alone because there is no vesicular gland present in case of dogs in case of pig testicular part of vas deferens is coiled and closely attached to tunica vaginalis there is no distinct ampulla present in case of pig so vas deferens and duct of vesicular gland they open separately next important structure is the spermatic cord various components that is spermatic artery spermatic vein lymph vessels 
spermatic nerve, ductus deferens, internal cremaster muscle, and the visceral layer of the tunica vaginalis. The, actually, the spermatic cord it is formed by two bundles. The cranial bundle of the spermatic cord it is formed by spermatic artery, vein, nerve, and lymph vessels. Whereas the caudal bundle of the spermatic cord it is formed by ductus deferens, internal cremaster muscle, and visceral layer of the tunica vaginalis. Next part is the urethra. So urethra in case of bull, it extends from the internal urethral opening at the neck of the urinary bladder and opens at the external urethral opening which is present at the tip of the penis. It is divided into two parts, pelvic part and extra pelvic part or penile part of the urethra. Pelvic part of the urethra it is subdivided into proximal, pre-prostatic part and prostatic part which is joined by ductus deferens and vascular duct to form ejaculatory duct. Pelvic part is enclosed by urethral muscles ventrally and laterally. It is related to the rectum, prostate gland above and internal obturator muscles below and vulvo-urethral glands laterally. Extra pelvic part of the urethra is the second part. The next part is the penis. So there are two types of penis in domestic animals, fibroelastic and musculocavernosus type. In case of bull, it is fibroelastic type. It is having three parts, root, body and glass part. Root is formed by the crura of the penis and unpaired part of the penis. The body or the shaft is formed by bulk of the organ and composed of corpus cavernosum penis muscles and urethra which is surrounded by corpus spongiosum. Glass penis, it is formed by spongy body that is corpus spongiosum. Fibroelastic type of penis is present in these animals in non-erectile conditions. A sigmoid flexor is present in the thighs, which is maintained by the retractor penile muscles present in the penis. In case of horse, the penis is musculocavernous type and increases in size up to 50% during erection. Glass penis is enlarged and its base there is present a prominent margin termed as corona glandus which is having a depression in the center termed as fossa glandus. Behind the corona, the glass is in the form of neck of glass. The urethra is having a fossa glandus as free urethral opening. Next is in case of bore. Bore is having fibroelastic type of penis and sigmoid flexus is pre-sacrotal. Cranial part is twisted spirally that is cork screw like penis is present in case of bore. Then in case of dog, the penis is having a bone that is termed as os penis. The last penis is very long and extended over the entire length of the os penis. So it is composed of erectile tissue and the characteristic shape of the glass in case of dog is due to the presence of bone. So penis is covered by prepuce that is the skin sheath in all the animals except the glass penis which is not covered by any covering. The last part is the accessory sex glands which are present in case of different animals. There are four types of glands, ampullary gland, vesicular gland, prostate gland, bulbo-urethral glands. Ampullary glands, they are present in dog, bull and horses. It is actually the terminal part of the ductus deferens which is enlarged to form the ampullary gland. Next is the vesicular glands. These are the Paired vesicular glands, they are present in bull, horse and pig, but not in case of dogs. Vesicular glands, they are compact glands with lobulation on outer surface. It is situated on the dorsal surface of the bladder. Dorsally, it is related to the rectum and the duct of the vesicular gland, 
it joins the terminal part of ductus deferens to open at colliculus seminalis in case of horse the vesicular glands they are termed as seminal vesicle because they are pear shaped structure each gland it consists of a rounded blind end called fundus middle part body and caudal part neck ejaculatory duct of the seminal vesicle it opens at the common opening with the vas deferens at colliculus seminalis in case of horses also in case of pig the shape of the vesicular gland is pyramidal and very large in size and extends into the abdominal cavity also difference is that they are having more than 6 ejaculatory duct of the vesicular gland in case of pig which opens at the common opening with colliculus seminalis then the prostate gland prostate gland is present in all the domestic animals that is in case of ox horse dog and pig it is made up of two parts outer part is the compact body which is also termed as corpus prostate and the inner part is pars disseminata or the diffuse part of the prostate gland prostate gland in case of ox is having both the parts that is body and disseminate part in case of horse the prostate gland is lobulated gland present at the neck of the urinary bladder here only the body is present no disseminate part is present in the horses in dog prostate gland is the only gland which is present in case of dogs the disseminate part is vestigial but the compact body part is large and globular in shape entirely surrounding the urinary bladder and the urethra in case of pig there are two parts that is pars disseminata and body is prominent next is the bulbo urethral glands in case of ox it is located on either side of the pelvic urethra at the ischial arch it is smaller in size and cherry shaped it is covered by fibrous tissue and the bulbo cavernosus muscle then in case of horse bulbo urethral glands which are oval in shape and covered by the urethral muscles in case of pig bulbo urethral glands they are large dense cylindrical glands with lobulated surface they lie on either side of posterior two third of the penile urethra it is partially covered by the bulbo glandular muscles now we will learn about the comparative anatomy of female reproductive system female reproductive system is consisting of paired ovaries which produces ova and hormones uterine tube or fallopian tube which captures the ova released from ovary and convey it to the uterus uterus is the next part in which the fertilized ovum develops the next part is cervix the next part is vagina which acts as the birth canal vulva is a terminal part of female genital tract ovaries of cow ovaries originate from the gonadal ridges located in the lumbar region they are located in pelvic inlet they are oval to rounded in shape and about 4 to 6 cm in length ovaries undergo dramatic cyclic changes borders of ovaries along with the mesovarium that attaches to ovary is called mesovarial border the opposite border is free and is called free border the anterior extremity is related with beginning of uterine tube whereas opposite end is called uterine end the surfaces are medial and lateral surfaces ovary is covered by connective tissue layer which is called tunica albuginea below tunica albuginea is the parenchymatous zone which consists of ovarian follicles in different stages of their development and corpora lutea also known as corpus luteum The different types of follicles which are found are primordial, primary, secondary and tertiary or graafian follicle. Mature follicle resembles like a blister. At the time of ovulation, the mature follicle ruptures, leaving a central cavity called corpus hemorrhagicum which eventually gets converted into corpus luteum. 
a connective tissue scar left after degeneration of corpus luteum is known as corpus albicans the innermost part of connective tissue is called medulla which consists of a large number of blood vessels and the outermost part consisting of the different stages of follicles is the cortex part the ovaries in case of mare mare ovaries are bean shaped and largest among the domestic animals ranging from 8 to 12 cm in size in mature ovary the medulla is peripheral and cortex is central in location which is in contrast to that found in case of cow the different types of follicles which are found primary secondary and tertiary or graafian follicle the depression on the free border of ovary is called ovulation fossa ovaries in bitches elongated flat oval present opposite to third to fourth lumbar vertebrae they are completely enclosed by ovarian bursa which has a slit like opening ventrally ovaries in bitch have no distinct hilus so ovaries are more rounded and have a distinct hilus they are present at or near the lateral margin of pelvic inlet just like the cow uneven surface due to presence of many follicles and corpora lutea on its surface so ovaries are concealed in ovarian bursa which is cone shaped uterine tube in case of cows the uterine tubes are paired convoluted tubes that conduct the ova from each ovary to respective horns of the uterus these are the usual site of fertilization of ova by spermatozoa each tube is suspended by mesosalphinx the uterine tube has three parts in fundibulum ampulla and isthmus the portion of uterine tube adjacent to the ovary is expanded to form a funnel shaped structure called infundibulum the free edge of this infundibulum is raised to form irregular processes known as fimbria the infundibulum partially or completely encloses the ovary which directs the ovum into the uterine tube In the center of funnel small abdominal opening of uterine tube is present which is called ostium abdominal the ostium abdominal is the only opening of peritoneal cavity in case of females and no such opening is present in case of males the next part is ampulla which is relatively wide and is the site of fertilization which is followed by more convoluted and narrow part known as isthmus Isthmus joins the apex of horn of uterus at a junction termed as utrotubal junction and the opening is called uterine ostium. This utrotubal junction is gradual in ruminants and is serves as the barrier for sperm and ova. Uterine tubes in case of mare are shorter and more coiled and the utrotubal junction is abrupt and the tube opens in the center of small papilla. which forms a barrier against ascending infections uterine tubes in bitches they are shorter and slightly flexuous and the utrotubal junction is abrupt in case of bitches so uterine tubes are tortuous and the utrotubal junction is gradual in case of so uterus the next part of female genital system is uterus In domestic mammals the fusion is intermediate and comprises two uterine horns a single body and the continuation part is called the cervix uterus is the hollow musculomembranous sac which is continuous with the oviduct in front and vagina behind the intercornual ligament is present at a point of divergence of two uterine horns The body of the uterus is very small about 4 to 5 cm long approximately. The wall of uterus is composed of outer serous coat called perimetrium, middle muscular coat called myometrium and the innermost called the endometrium. In case of cow the endometrium presents characteristic mucosal elevations distributed over the internal surface of uterus known as caruncles. which are about 80 to 120 in number and arranged in the rows caruncles are the attachment sites of fetal cotyledons to form placentum during pregnancy the next part is known as cervix cervix in case of cow is the caudal most part of uterus 
which connects the uterus with vagina. Cervix is the part which opens at the time of estrus and parturition. The caudal portion of cervix projects for a short distance into vagina and is called portio vaginalis. The lumen of cervix extends from internal uterine opening or internal ostium to the external uterine opening or external ostium. In ruminants, the internal surface of cervix is arranged in a series of circular ridges or rings called as annular folds or plicae circularis. The next part to the cervix is vagina. In case of cow, the portion of the reproductive tract that lies within the pelvis between caudal portion of cervix cranially and the vulva caudally is called the vagina. It is related dorsally to the rectum and ventrally to urinary bladder and urethra. Vestibule is the next part. In case of cow, it extends from external urethral opening to vulva and the transition between vagina and vestibule is demarcated by external urethral orifice and therefore vestibule is functionally common to both urinary and reproductive tracts. In cow and so, suburethral diverticulum is present which is a short blind sac ventral to opening of urethra. The canals of Gartner open on either side of external urethral opening and they are the remnants of Wolfian ducts or mesonephric ducts. The openings of major vestibular glands are present on each side of vestibule. Vulva is the next part. In case of cow, the vulva is the external genitalia of female. It comprises of right and left labia which meet on the midline dorsally and ventrally at the rounded dorsal and pointed ventral commissure respectively and surround the vulvar opening. The ventral commissure is usually somewhat pendulous and it conceals the clitoris in depression called fossa clitoridis and is covered by mucosal fold which is equivalent to prepuce. The broad ligament. Broad ligament is common suspension of female reproductive tract and it connects the visceral peritoneum of female reproductive tract to parietal peritoneum of abdominal wall. It is having different parts. Mesovarium. It is the cranial part of broad ligament attaching ovary to the dorsolateral abdominal wall. It serves as hilus. Mesosalphinx is a part of broad ligament which holds uterine tube between its layers and is not attached directly to the abdominal wall. Mesometrium. It is the part of broad ligament which attaches the uterine horns and body to the dorsolateral abdominal wall. Mare uterus. The body is relatively large and the horns are short. The endometrium is devoid of caruncles in contrast to that of cow. In case of mare, the cervical lumen is occluded by longitudinal mucosal folds. The portio vaginalis is present and surrounded by annular space called as fornix vagina. In case of bitches, the uterine horns are very long and the body is short. It forms a V-shaped structure with the shape of uterine horns and the uterine horns reach near the kidneys. Cervix in bitches. The mucosal folds in cervix of bitches, they are arranged longitudinally. The cervical canal simply widens to continue in the vagina. The portio vaginalis is absent similarly in bitches as well. Vagina is long and fornix vagina is indistinct. In case of so, the uterine horns are long and arranged like the coils of intestine. The long cervix and the rows of mucosal projections project into the cervical canal which interdigitate to form pulvini cervicales. In case of so cervix, the portio vaginalis is absent. The vagina is approximately 10 to 12 cm long and high longitudinal folds are present on its internal surface. In case of so, minor vestibular glands are present in two rows. Suburethral diverticulum is present. The labia is covered by a wrinkled skin and the ventral commissure is pointed. The glans clitoridis is in the form of small projection.
to watch more educational videos on veterinary and animal sciences subscribe the channel and please touch the bell icon guru angad dev veterinary and animal sciences university ludhiana on youtube